internally this phone is a lot like other Galaxy S phones but the main differences are going to be externally you can see the smaller display of course it's still super AMOLED but it makes uh, room for that ticker display at the bottom that brings in all your social network updates uh, your missed calls your emails your news and things of that nature and we'll take a look at all of that in the software portion of this review um, there are also some other differences on the sides of the device as you can see the left side here um, is the micro USB port which is usually at the top on one of the Galaxy S phones um, and now on the top you can see a power button there when it's usually on the right side here and now on the right side you get the micro SD card slot um, instead of having to take the battery door off to access that in other Galaxy S phones you don't have to take the battery out to access the SD card slot but it's still a nice convenience um, feature to not have to mess with the door at all um, there's still a 1500 milliamp hour battery, 1 gigahertz Samsung Hummingbird processor, 512 megabytes of ROM, and 384 megabytes of RAM. Um, and all of that uh, makes it just as fast as any other Galaxy S phone. Um, but uh, the main differences are going to be on the, uh, the, ex the edges of the phone and then the display. It's still the same plasticky, kind of uh, finicky feeling phone. Um, it's a nice looking phone, but um, it doesn't feel like it's a, <laughs> it feels like a play toy, but um, it's still a nice size, it's a nice weight, especially for people who have uh, smaller hands who'd like to pocket a phone that's not um, a brick, and this is definitely going to appeal to them. It's a lot slimmer than uh, Verizon's other Galaxy S phone, the Fascinate, as you can see, this, the uh, screen is not only shorter, but it's thinner, so um, that's a plus, I guess, if you're a... Uh, if you want to just throw it into your pocket and if you don't want to worry about uh, you just having a huge bulge in the side of your pants um, this phone is definitely going to uh, keep a low profile in that regard you still see the uh, 5 megapixel camera on the back with flash and the um, um, the scratchable <laughs> uh, back door um, other than that everything else is uh, pretty much like any other Galaxy S phone um, so the main differences are going to be in the software um, which we're going to take a look at that incorporates that ticket display. The software on the Continuum is not uh, too much different from what you get on the Samsung Fascinate. You still get Bing, you still get Blockbuster, Kindle, um, MySpace and all that stuff but here uh, it's uh, the twist is a ticket display and all of the different apps that um, that integrate with it so uh, there you can see the ticket display just came up and that'll keep flashing if something uh, new comes in um, at whatever time you set it so there you can see the time just came up I actually activated that by gripping the uh, what they call the grip sensors on the side just beneath the camera button so you have to press it on both sides and it'll activate the ticket display and then you can just get a quick view of what time it is the weather if you have any missed calls emails text messages and then any updates that come in. I don't have any updates uh, right now, so it's not going to show me anything. It's just going to go back to the weather quickly. But um, if you had anything there, uh, you could just press it there and be taken straight into the app. So let's just go ahead and try it with the weather. You just press it. It turns on the secondary or the primary display and uh, jumps you right into the app. So I just jumped in the weather bug, check the weather, do everything you do. Um, you normally do in the weather bug app. And then the same would be true if I just wanted to... Um, it's keep, it keeps going off. <laughs> if I just wanted to jump right into my social networking stuff um, and my RSS feed. So um, here you can just get an aggregated view of your Twitter, Facebook, MySpace, and your RSS feeds. This is everything in one. Um, here you can get just your your social networks, but you can't. Uh, you can sort by time, or you can sort by account. You can sort by. Um, by which social network you want to look at um, but you can't just get one in each tab which uh, I would have liked I would have liked to have a Twitter tab a Facebook tab things like that but um, I guess sorting is good enough you'd still have to scroll through the entire list if you have a lot of Twitter updates and then you have to get to the Facebook updates underneath that so um, I would have liked a little bit of a cleaner uh, a cleaner sorting experience there and then here's just your RSS you can pretty much do the same with that you can sort it by uh, publishers so here we have CNN we have ESPN and you can do it by time too and that would be the more uh, sensible way to do it if you just want to see uh, everything the latest whatever so and then here will be your events here missed calls your text messages will all show up here and there are a lot of settings you can choose to customize um, use to customize uh, how the ticker display works so here um, Facebook, MySpace, and Twitter you can choose to get updates on certain things so messages, friends requests, 
so, um, and then for Twitter you could do messages or just receive all you can't do specifically for um, uh, mentions or I'm sorry uh, direct messages you can only do it for mentions and then your uh, your main timeline and then for Facebook messages pokes friend requests things of that nature and you can change whether you want to uh, associate that with the ringtone or um, and vibration whenever it comes in you can also adjust the weather to change your city um, settings allow you to change the units heights and uh, how long you how often you want to refresh and everything like that so um, see enable current location and you can do that using GPS or using the network um, and the GPS actually does work on this phone I have tried it uh, a couple of times so uh, nothing to worry about in that regard and going back uh, here you can customize your RSS feed so you can add your, your own RSS feeds uh, here the thing is you'll need to um, actually have the RSS URL which is a pain um, but it's uh, if you really I guess if you really want to use the ticket display that's uh, something you're gonna have to deal with but they also have a preloaded uh, list of RSS feeds and uh, it's not a lot and it's probably uh, probably gonna be from places that don't interest you routers CNN um, the only one I'm really interested in is ESPN, so <laughs> um, it's no, you're gonna have to side load your own, side load your own RSS feeds if you really want them, um, and then you have your display settings. You can um, the thing I like here is you can uh, um, not here. It's actually here ticker sleep time. Um, you can customize when you want it to be active. So uh, say between the hours of 7 a.m. and 10 p.m. when I'm up out and about during the day and that's when I want my ticket display to you know alert me of everything that's coming in and then at night um, whenever I'm asleep I don't want it to do that because I'm not going to be checking it anyway so um, that's pretty nice and uh, here you can just uh, select how long you want the display to last so I have it on five seconds because I want to I'm not sure how much of an impact on battery life this thing has I haven't really done any scientific tests but uh, I just always set it to the lowest possible and then you can choose to um, use the grip sensor or not um, if that's become a problem if that becomes a problem for you uh, if it's in your pocket or if you just grip the phone and you keep activating the ticker display by accident uh, you can turn that off so that's pretty one nice. thing I don't like that a lot of end users might not care about is the fact that Samsung hasn't um, allowed any third-party developer support they haven't released any SDKs for it and they've made no indication that they're going to uh, do anything like that in the future um, and they've also made no indication that they would um, update it with their own uh, different types of integration so uh, here's pretty much gonna be a what you see what you get uh, deal so you get the weather bug you get Twitter Facebook and MySpace um, and Twitter will be through Tweedroid's app um, but everything else is gonna uh, anything else is gonna have to come from Samsung themselves and they haven't committed to uh, integrating any of the services with this um, and it's not that big of a deal. The ticket display is still convenient, still kind of neat, um, but it's it becomes a little more than a novelty at the end of the day if you uh, um, because you still need to open the screen to check out whatever you've missed or uh, whatever you've missed or whatever um, you know whatever updates come in anyway. So to me, it's just a glorified status bar. I don't see why you couldn't get everything that you get here in a status bar. Um, it's a nice little. Uh, feature it's something that sets itself apart but that's pretty much all it's doing um, and I guess the smaller display uh, would be um, beneficial for people who want a smaller phone but still want a Galaxy S phone um, and that would be uh, something to take a look at when you look at this phone but the ticker display um, I wouldn't put too much stock into it no pun intended um, it's just not the most uh, not the most exciting thing I've ever had to uh, play with <laughs> um, it became a little more than a novelty after just about a day so um, if it's something you wanted to get it for don't be surprised if you suddenly don't care about it because uh, at the end of the day it's virtually um, just a uh, just a way to get to your main screen might as well just use the main screen anyway so um, that was the Samsung Continuum by Verizon and you can find it in their stores this holiday season